up photosystems. So what photosystems actually are, are going to be these clusters of photosynthetic pigments. And this is going to be found on the membrane of the thylakoid. And I think it's easiest if I actually show you a picture of a photosystem. Not that one, that one's scary. Here we go. So this is going to be what a photosystem is right here. <clears throat> and this phospholipid bilayer you see here is the membrane of the thylakoid. So remember the green poker chips. This is on the surface of those, okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to have photons of light that are going to hit it. And what's going to happen is that energy is going to get transferred from one pigment to the next until it gets channeled right here in the center. This is the reaction center complex. What's going to happen here is that's going to cause an electron to get shoved up here. And then that's going to go through another little part that we'll talk about in a second. But that's the basics of how a photosystem works, okay? Now, if you look at this picture here, this is showing you two photosystems because it needs two photosystems to do the light reactions. So if you look, they're named photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Um, unfortunately, photosystem 2 is the one that functions first and then photosystem 1. The reason for that is because they discovered photosystem 1 first and then photosystem 2, and that's just how they named them, and heaven forbid they change them because that would make sense, right? Okay, so what I also want you to notice is photosystem 2 has the, word, uh, the letters and numbers P680, and photosystem 1 has the numbers P700. That has to do with the wavelengths of light that they're really good at absorbing. Okay. So let's follow this. I know this looks scary, but we are going to get through this. It's really not as bad as you think. So what this whole thing here is, is showing you the light reactions in, in the whole thing, okay? So we've got light hitting the pigment. That energy is getting transferred from one to the other until it ends up here. And what's going to happen here is that electron is going to get shoved up here because of the energy that it's received from the sun. Then what's going to happen is that electron is going to do something you're familiar with. It's going to go down an electron transport chain. Does that sound familiar? I hope it does because we talked about that with the cell respiration chapter, right? And the whole point of the electron transport chain was to make ATP. Look what's being made here, ATP, okay? Exact same idea. You've got electrons hopping down, and as they do that, they're going to give off enough energy for that ATP synthase to make ATP. Okay, so that's one of the products that we've made as a result of this. Now, this electron's going to end up down here. At the same time, another batch of light is going to hit these pigments. That's going to transfer that energy over to here. That's going to cause that same electron to get shoved up here. And then it's going to go down another electron transport chain. But instead of making ATP, this time it's going to reduce NADP to NADPH. Okay, so there's our other product. So we've got ATP and we have NADPH being created by this. So that's going to be how photosystems work. Okay, so now let's look at our notes again. We talked about all of this. Um, let's talk actually about how light works, the biophysics of light. So if we go to the PowerPoint, I kind of skipped over this. Light is going to come to us, the visible light from the sun is going to come to us and it's going to be white. Um, what white actually is, is all of the colors of the rainbow together, okay? And so you can see you've got um, from 380 to 750 nanometers, okay? And shorter wavelengths are going to have higher energy and longer wavelengths are going to have lower energy, okay? So wavelengths is like that, right? And so um, we're talking from crest to crest. So what's going to happen is the um, violets and blues are going to have shorter wavelengths and higher energy compared to the reds and yellows, which are going to have longer wavelengths and lower energy. And this actually all makes sense if you think about it. When the sun goes down, the first color to disappear is actually red, followed by orange and yellow. Um, so if you think about it, once the sun has gone down, everything just kind of looks like blue and purplish, right? And that's because those are the strongest wavelengths of light is how you can think about them. Okay, so when we see color, the way that it works is all of that light hitting something is white light. It's all the colors of the rainbow. Um, and what's going to happen is whatever gets absorbed gets absorbed, and whatever gets reflected gets reflected to our eye, and that's the color that we see. So what this is showing you is we've got all the colors of the rainbow hitting this green pigment here, and the green is getting reflected back to our eye, and that's why it looks green. Okay, so over here, this that looks blue, that means that all the colors of the rainbow are being absorbed except for blue, which is getting reflected to your eye. Okay, now what about black and white? If you see something that looks white, the reason it looks white is because all of the colors of the rainbow are getting reflected back to your eye, and your eye just freaks out, and it's like, ah, it's white. 
and that's just how it sees it. <clears throat> so you can probably guess what black is going to be. Black is going to be all the colors of the rainbow getting absorbed, right? And nothing is getting reflected. So that's how we actually see colors and why we see colors the way that we do. Um, so in the next video, we're going to talk about pigments and different types of pigments and what they're good at and what they're bad at.